Athar Lena Initiative in Historic Cairo, Heritage as a Driver for Development. Athar Lina is an initiative established in 2012 uh, and co-run by the Egyptian NGO, the Built Environment Collective, and Megaura Built Environment, a private architectural firm. Almost all our work is in partnership with the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, and quite a bit of it uh, uh, is, is in partnership with Cairo Governorate and the Ministry of Social Solidarity. We operate in the World Heritage Site of Historic Cairo in the district of Al Khalifa, where you see the numbers two, three, and five in the southern section of Historic Cairo. Within the district of Al Khalifa, uh, we started working first in Al Khalifa Street area, which is the area that you see here. And then we also uh, expanded to Al Imam Shafi Cemetery, the historic cemetery of Al Imam Shafi in the south, and the neighborhood of Al Hattaba. Uh, north of the citadel and uh, northeast of uh, Khalifa Street area. Our interest is in the heritage of Al Khalifa, but it's also in the community that lives around it and the relationship between the community and this heritage. Our mandate uh, is directly related to our name, Athar Lina, which translates as heritage is ours. And it functions on the premise that people will take care of their heritage if they, if they feel that they own it, and that the sense of ownership derives from benefit. We chose the neighborhood of Al Khalifa because it is rich in monuments, many of which are shrines that people are quite uh, attached to. Uh, we also chose it because it has a thriving community. And we also chose it because in 2012, when we entered the Khalifa, we were, we were curious about a particular phenomenon, which is that which was the fact that almost in front of almost every listed heritage site, there was a garbage dump. And this linked directly to the question that we are asking. The presence of garbage in front of a heritage site for us indicated uh, a loss of sense of ownership of the heritage sites. So for six months, we organized a series of participatory research workshops with stakeholders from the community, from the government, and from civil society, uh, in which we asked the following question. Why don't people feel that they own their heritage? If they, owned their her if they felt they owned their heritage, would they be more active uh, participants in the process of preserving and taking care of their heritage? Could heritage be derived from a sense of benefit? And how can, if so, how can the community benefit from its heritage? At the end of the six months, from June 2012 to the end of 2012, we saw that if we want to continue working along these lines, we should work along three main action lines. The first is conservation, that it continues to be important to uh, cons conserve heritage sites but we should take care to adapt them for reuse for the benefit of the community. The second is related to heritage education, that the sense of ownership and belonging uh, to heritage comes at a young age. Hence the need for heritage education for children, and later we expanded our program to include women uh, from a young age and at the level of the whole family. The third action line, which is the most challenging and the most complica complicated, uh, uh, is the idea that heritage should be grounded in the socioeconomics of the urban context and that heritage preservation and management should be linked to the improvement of quality of life in urban space. This is translated into two activities urban development and regeneration, so working on improving the quality of urban space. And the second field is heritage industries, which is basically any income generating activity that uses heritage as a resource, uh, such as tourism, craft, heritage inspired art, etc. What follows is a two minute film that shows you the kind of work that we have been doing in Al Khalifa uh, since uh, 2013 within the framework of Athar Lina Initiative. So as you can see, can see um, we work a lot on participatory uh, interdisciplinary research um, 
in a variety of different uh, locations in Al Khalifa. Uh, we work on conservation and rehabilitation. We've worked on a number of uh, buildings, most of them domes. Um, we are uh, very much uh, involved in the technicalities of conservation, in the design of the conservation project, and also in adaptive reuse. In terms of heritage industries and education, uh, we run a variety of different projects, um, all of them community-based, both uh, focusing on craft and art, and also on general education, but with a link to heritage. We organize activities, tours, workshops in uh, the district of Al Khalifa, both to, pro pro to promote this district as a, a, a tourist uh, venue and also for the local community. We build, we build on existing crafts and we also uh, 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 introduce new crafts to the neighborhood. In terms of urban regeneration, we work along two lines. We work along the line of research, but also on actual intervention uh, in uh, sites that are derelict or abandoned to transform them into spaces for the community and also spaces that celebrate heritage. And recently we started uh, developing an interest in linking is environmental issues with issues of uh, heritage. And I will explain this later. This is Al Khalifa Heritage uh, and Environment Park, which is country, currently under uh, implementation. And other projects that are linked to issues of groundwater in uh, Al Khalifa. So as you have seen, um, we've already uh, conserved five listed historic buildings from the 12th to the 15th century, but we're also interested in unlisted historic buildings that can be renovated and retrofitted. And the two images that you see in front of you are Al Khalifa Community Center and a Saliba House, uh, both of which have been renovated as uh, spaces from which we uh, operate in Al Khalifa. And here you see in front of you the different buildings, uh, heritage sites that we have uh, uh, conserved. Uh, Shagar Tadore Dome from the mid 13th century, the domes of Raya Gafari and Aitika from the 12th century, uh, Shurafa Shrine uh, uh, from the 15th century, Shurafa Shrine and Shagar Tadore Dome were both uh, funded by the American Research Center in Egypt. Seder Raya Gafari and Aitika and El Imam Shafi Dome, our latest conservation project, were both funded by the Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation. In terms of heritage uh, education and heritage industries, we started off with uh, summer camps for children um, uh, in Al Khalifa. Uh, and uh, we also started off uh, uh, running um, heritage uh, tours and developing a, uh, a, a, a line, a small line of products inspired by the neighborhood where we work. Uh, that can be sold uh, and uh, the, the, the proceeds go to the work that we do. We also organize an annual heritage um, promotion event called Spend, Spend the Day in Khalifa. We've been organizing it since 2013. What I'd like to focus here a little bit is Atharlina School, uh, uh, Atharlina Heritage and Design Thinking School. This school is the culmination of the work that we had started to experiment with in terms of heritage education, heritage industries. It combines three different schools within it, a school for young professionals focusing on craft, uh, crafts and, uh, the, uh, and products and activities that uh, are inspired by Al Khalifa. And in it, we pair prof professionals with craftspersons from the neighborhood, uh, designers with craftspersons. We also has, have a school for teenagers in which we introduce them to the, the idea that they could uh, 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 follow a vocation in heritage industries, and we continue to run our summer school, our heritage summer school. In terms of uh, working on an urban level, 
we have uh, rehabilitated a number of derelict sites as open spaces for recreation and sport. We started off with street art because it's it's kind of a quick fix and it's also a very fast way both to give back to the community and beautify Khalifa streets and also to bring into the community artists who uh, come in with their own network and raise the visibility of the street. The work that we do on an urban level is grounded in research. And from the beginning, we decided to focus our research on issues of infrastructure and services, particularly waste management and groundwater. In terms of groundwater, uh, we have a very specific kind of problem in Khalifa. Um, our issue is that the, the, we have a very high level of subsurface water to the point that the monuments, which are, are at a lower level, are uh, inundated and submerged under this water. And this water is not natural. It is actually the result of seepage from network um, uh, pipes, particularly uh, uh, the water supply pipes. So when we started to investigate the problem and this uh, within, we started off uh, with a, um, a, a conservation school focusing on the issues of groundwater, also um, uh, funded by the American Research Center in Egypt. Uh, we started to think about it in a more um, holistic manner and to think that maybe that Th this water that is causing problems and tends and the solution tends to be to extract it through a dewatering uh, project we could actually take it and reuse it for the benefit of the community uh, in for purposes such as cleaning and irrigation flushing water, fire control etc and this was the premise of Khalifa Heritage and Environment Park this park is located opposite two inundated domes from the Mamluk period, uh, Ashraf Khalil and Fatima Khatun. The idea here is to extract water, to lower the water table under these domes, and use the water to irrigate the park that you see in front of you. As I mentioned, this, ki the this kind of work is grounded in quite extensive research. Uh, our approach here is two-pronged. We do the research in collaboration with the government and the, uh, the outcome of the research is shared with the government so that they can use it uh, to implement more large scale uh, projects and uh, to, to uh, and so, so that they can also uh, it, it can be a way of guiding their policy but then within the research we try to identify what we can do as a small initiative functioning in the neighborhood uh, and also we uh, try as much as possible to share the knowledge gained. What you see in front of you is a part of the conservation and management plan for Al Khalifa Street area. This is uh, this builds on the methodologies developed by the Urban Regeneration of Historic Cairo project, which was implemented by UNESCO Cairo uh, earlier. And the result is shared again with the community and also shared through our website and through publications uh, with the government and with uh, uh, whoever is interested, uh, whether professionals or academics. The work that we do on this level also goes to the government in the form of pro bono technical support. So, uh, so for example, here we see a study that was prepared by us for Cairo, Cairo Governorate uh, for the renovation of the street facades of Al Khalifa Street area. And uh, Cairo Governorate obtained funding to do this project and asked us to provide them with the technical support, which we did in the form of uh, a detailed design study and bills of quantities and specifications. I also would like to focus here on another project, Al Hataba Development Project. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the third area we started working in within the district of Al Khalifa. Al Hataba is located immediately north of the citadel of Salah al Din, um, and it lies within what is called the buffer zone of the citadel of Salah al Din. A monument buffer zone is a protection area around a listed heritage site. Uh, in which all change is controlled by the Ministry of Antiquities, now Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities. In principle, this is a very good idea, but unfortunately for decades, in the 70s, in the 80s and 90s in particular, uh, the, the policy of uh, the antiquities authorities was to prevent all construction 
all restoration, all renovation of buildings in buffer zones with the hope that they will uh, be able to clear the area around the monuments. This resulted in uh, the deterioration of these buildings, as you can see on the right, although, as you can see on the left, many of them were uh, of uh, quite high historic value. And after these buildings deteriorated, the, uh, the Egyptian government steps in again and lists the entire area as an unsafe informal settlement. This, of course, is, uh, it, it is true that some of the buildings are unsafe, but um, it is not an informal settlement and listing it as such means that it is slated for evacuation and demolition, which of course is unacceptable because it is a heritage uh, area within the borders of the World Heritage Site of Historic Cairo. So we set about in collaboration with the community and with the government to work on an alternative plan uh, for the preservation of this area and its regeneration and rehabilitation. Um, and this plan, which basically uh, proposes a tourist path along the periphery of the area and the, the, the rehabilitation and rebuilding of the residential stock, uh, the buildings uh, within the, the core of the area and the provision of services in the area. Uh, this plan was uh, submitted to the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities and it was uh, approval was, uh, was obtained. It was also presented uh, quite um, in, in detail to a number of decision makers, most notably the Prime Minister of Egypt. And um, the idea here was to propose a number of income generating activities that build on local tourism more than uh, international tourism, and that um, are uh, centered around heritage sites in the neighborhood along the periphery, as, as I mentioned. And um, uh, we were fortunate enough to, um, to to get quite positive feedback, and we're now waiting to see if uh, the, the project will be uh, uh, included within the, the, the current project for the development and the regeneration of historic Cairo. Uh, these are examples of the kinds of projects that we propose. So this is a Nizame restaurant and a coffee shop in Hilltop uh, 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 complex and this uh, is built around the the ruin of Nzameya as you can see uh, this is another proposal that again uh, use it uses uh, monuments in the core. This is the museum complex, which is a string of uh, uh, themed museums along the main street, all in listed heritage sites that tell the history of Al Hataba uh, through um, uh, aspects specific to it, such as the fact that it was on the pilgrimage road, that it has a number of, uh, of um, uh, um, uh, buildings for uh, related to water, that it's uh, directly linked to the cemetery, and that it has a very strong craft tradition. Currently, most probably, uh, more, uh, currently, most importantly, uh, inlaid uh, uh, wood and cheme uh, or patchwork. And this is another proposal for another uh, project. The core of this project is Shurafa uh, Shrine, which was which we have recently conserved, also with funding from the American Research Center in Egypt. And here, the idea is to reuse um, around ten buildings ar uh, around the shrine and the shrine as a center for craft and design to uh, develop and to also promote and market uh, the craft of uh, Al Khalif uh, of Al Khattaba. Uh, and this, with this, I come to the end of my presentation. These, uh, these are our uh, websites and our social uh, media pages. And, uh, and I would also like to uh, thank our sponsors and donors and also our partners. Uh, thank you very much.